Hey, it's Kevin Topol with JK on the Run, and while James is whooping it up in Las Vegas, I'm kind of minding the shop, and, uh, well, I figured I'd sleep in a little bit today since, you know, the boss is away, right? You know, so I'm kind of, like, still in my PJs here. I did catch my shower, but, like, I didn't shave, and no, no time for product in the hair just yet. So the reason I'm up a little bit uh, earlier than planned is because there was just a knock at the door. It was the FedEx man, and he brought me something from Dynamism. I remember telling you folks about it late last week, and it's here already. Here it is. It's the Vi S37, and uh, it's interesting how small this little box is. I mean, it's hard to compare to anything I have here, but uh, I mean, this, this box is roughly 12 inches tall, just to give you an idea. So obviously this little guy is the little guy. Let's take a quick peek. I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time... Uh, going through it, but I do want to just kind of open it up for the first time and let you take a peek as I take a peek. And uh, boy, this is like a very minimalist setup here. We just got the uh, the computer here and a, and a box. Pretty straightforward. We'll go right to the computer. Oh, wow. Nice and light. Nice and light. I suspect the battery is not in it, and it is not. That may have something to do with the low weight. Take a look at these. Put them over here. I'm going to be very, very careful with this because this is on loan to me from the good folks over at Dynamism. I know if you hit up dynamism.com, they sell the Vi and the Kojinsha, which is pretty much the same device, a few minor differences. Uh, I believe the Vi goes for $1,350, uh, but double check to be sure. Hit up dynamism.com and take a look. This is interesting. Nicely packaged with a screen protector, kind of like that felt mesh protection. And here it is, the little, little Vi S37. And, uh, hmm. Pretty nice, pretty nice. It's like uh, there's a protector here on the back. I'll probably leave it on because this is just a review unit that I'll have for a week or two. And you can see that the battery is not in. We'll go right here. It's very light, I can tell you that. Very light. So that means the battery then, it's probably in the box over here. Let's just see what's in here. And I'm just going to do some quick comparisons between, say, the Samsung Q1P, which is my everyday UMPC, uh, which I use with a Bluetooth keyboard. And this Vi could effectively take place of that. So I want to compare that, check the inking out, and so forth. So what do we have? We've got a little carry case, a little case. That'll be interesting to look at. There's the battery. I don't know if it's charged. We'll take a look at that in detail. Okay, now here's something I always look at with my mobile devices, and that is the, the AC charging brick, the adapter. And if you bear with me one second, I have my gadget bag here off to the side with what I carry every day. And in there, I don't always take this with, but I do have the AC adapter for the Samsung Q1. Q1P and so forth, that whole Q1 series. And uh, this is for the for the Vi. This is for the Samsung. And uh, almost the same size, actually. Same thickness. The Vi's is a little bit smaller, not quite as wide as the Vi on the bottom. So a little bit smaller. Um, I'm missing a cord. I have the full cord here. So let me just see from a weight perspective, because that's always something to consider, and I would say pretty equal, pretty equal. I'm no scale by any means, but it's pretty much the same. Let me put the key ones back over here. I'm not going to plug in the vibe right now, but you want to take a look at the battery. Maybe, just maybe it's charged. I don't know. Let's have a look-see. Okay, 5,200 milliamps, which, digging into the gadget bag yet again, is the same as the Samsung Q1P's extended battery. Is that correct? Yes, it is. 5,200 milliamps. So, again, by Samsung. You'd expect these to be roughly the same size, because really, they probably have the same six cells inside them. So that's kind of nice that the Vi comes with a six-cell battery, I presume. 
I'd have to check and see if that's something that Dynamism includes or that's actually comes with every Vi that you purchase if you purchase directly from Vi or another retailer. One thing I do notice that I would miss is on my Samsung, I have the little LED display right here. I can just tap that button and the LED lights will show me how much battery juice I have. You do not have any indicator of that type on the Vi that I can see. Not a big deal, but that's okay. Alright, so I really don't know if this is charged at the moment, and what we're going to do is very carefully put it in there. It locks nicely. You can see that it's an extended battery. You can tell right here this extra piece kind of sticks out. I don't know if they make a standard battery. Maybe they only come with, with ex uh, extenders. I don't know. But obviously that changes the weight of the device uh, quite, quite, uh, quite a bit. Now... Not bad, not bad. Just for some other size comparisons, actually real quick, let's take a quick peek in the box. We have a recovery disk here. We have a, a for distribution with a new PC only Windows Vista Home Premium. So it's Vista plus all the tablet bits. And I specifically asked uh, for Dynamism if they could to upgrade the RAM from one gig to two gig on this because I do prefer Vista over XP and I want to compare how Vista runs on the Vive versus how it runs for me on the Samsung. Honestly, I've had no problems, and the key is 2 gig. It has to be, because I haven't seen very many complaints with anybody running Vista on a mobile device with 2 gig. I've seen plenty of complaints when they don't have 2 gig. So, we also have a user guide, and that's pretty much it for what's in the box. Now, I said I was going to compare sizes real quick, so let's do that. Oh. I'm going to actually put this into slate mode, if you bear with me one second. Let me just see, does it turn both ways? No, it does not. It only turns clockwise. Pretty solid. And down, no latch. Not necessarily a problem, but just worth a mention. And you can see how much that battery protrudes out when you're in slate mode now. It's interesting. So, these guys both have the same size screens. And let's see if I can do it this way without glaring it too much. Let's turn that upside down. Okay. They're both 7-inch screens. The Samsung Q1 and Q1P run a 800 by 480 resolution. The Vi, and this is one of the big differences, the Vi runs 12, uh, 1024 by 600, my fault, 1024 by 600. And uh, so we've got quite a bit more resolution there, more pixels per inch. And it's also an LED backlit screen. Save a little bit on the juice, and it will also um, offer much, much brighter, much more brightness. I don't know what the actual number of nits is uh, on this device just yet, but we'll be doing some comparisons. Okay. Thickness-wise, these are pretty much the same thickness. Let's put it sideways. Mm -hmm. That'll hurt your wrist if you do that all day, Al. And uh, so really, it's not that much different in terms of size. Let me put the extended battery back in the Q1, because that's actually a better comparison, a truer comparison. Yeah, you can see the Q1 on the top is shorter by this amount, which is about an inch and a half to two inches. Okay. So, very interesting. Now, one thing I do like about the Q1 is that the bezel I use it to rest my wrist, and, and I like not having too much on the bezel. I see that there's quite a bit here in the Vi that's both good and bad. And in looking at um, Michael Connick's Kojincha, which is very similar, in fact, it has the same button layout, there was one thing that concerned me, uh, because I don't want to be inking on the screen and hitting the scroll button, perhaps, or the mouse button, or anything like that. So that's going to be a concern. There's a camera right up there. That's pretty nice. Very nice. The directional pad on the left side here, and the pointer here. And the squarish pointer doesn't really extend or protrude all that much. I doubt you can even see it. If I go sideways, probably not, but it's right there. All right. And then, as I said, we've got mouse buttons here, left and right. We've got scroll up and down here. Launcher, shutter, rotation, and enter. That's nice rotation. I'm curious to play with that. Okay, let's bring this back into convertible laptop mode. I see actually as I go halfway, 
you wouldn't really want to use your machine like this. It's kind of reaching around corners. Uh, but I happen to notice the speaker here and speaker there. So that's nice. That's one thing I really like about my Q1 is the, the speakers and the sound out of it. Okay, well, we've also got, obviously, a keyboard, which we don't have on the Samsung Q1, being that that's a, a Slate UMPC. So we've got our keyboard here. It looks like it's an English keyboard. I don't see any foreign characters of any type. We've got a little Windows key down here. Um, it's going to be tight. It's a full keyboard. I wouldn't say it's a full-size keyboard, but it's a full keyboard. And then, of course, we have a little mouse pad and buttons here. I see some lights down here for well, it looks like hard drive activity, battery power, lock, etc. Caps lock. And uh, also notice the volume on the front. We've got headphone jack, microphone jack, and we've got a switch for your wireless on and off. Okay. We might as well go right around the device. We'll go back to the keyboard in a second. So we've got power right there. We'll try powering it up a few. We've got a VGA out. We've got a little door here. And there it is. With USB and Ethernet, wired Ethernet if you need it. I very rarely use that. Got the power input, and we've got a Kensington lock port there. Nothing on the back. Okay, good to see a second USB port. Always good to see because if I'm using a, my USB modem, I'm going to want that second. USB port for other things like an external drive and things like that. Although maybe I won't need that because it looks like there's an SD and memory card reader right here. Nice. Another Kensington lock and then a CF slot right here. Not big into the CF slots. I'm sure people who are using um, digital cameras probably are. It's just a personal preference. I don't use them. Okay, back to the keyboard since there isn't one on the Samsung. All right, so we've got two similar yet distinctly different devices and what I want to do real quick is go to the gadget bag yet again one last time what's in the bag what's in the bag this right here is what I want to pull out because when I need to type this is what I use this is my stowaway uh, think outside Bluetooth keyboard which folds and then locks into a full-size keyboard. And the reason I want to do that is because this is my preferred keyboard for the Samsung, so I wouldn't use it with the Vi because the Vi has a keyboard. So let's just take a quick peek. If I can do this very carefully without dropping anything. I can drop this. I paid for it. This is a loaner. Um, kind of see that the full-size keyboard is definitely bigger. You know, probably by about oh a third, maybe a quarter, maybe a quarter. So let's see if I can do this. Um, you can look at the key sizes, the actual keys. You can see that on the Vi, they're they're tight and they're small. So. It's going to be an interesting little experiment over the next week just to see how the, the typing experience is with the Vi. Um, I mean, if I'm going to blog something, uh, which is the majority of my, my computer use, is, uh, besides reading things on the web, but writing about them, sharing my opinions for what they're worth, um, if I'm not inking, I'm pounding away on that little keyboard. And the question's going to be, how much can I pound away on that little keyboard? It's going to be interesting. And I can do it. I have small hands. I, just to give people a frame of reference, I'm about five foot six. Uh, I don't have very big hands. My ring size is a size seven, so I don't have very, very thick fingers either. Um, so I'm sure I'll be able to get by on this. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to, I think, because there's just such a small amount of travel between the different keys. So we'll see. I'm very interested in this device, and overall. Um, I'm impressed that there's so much in such a little package because, you know, just to, to round this out, give you the, the final 60 seconds here with this device, um, specification-wise, it has Wi-Fi in it, it has Bluetooth in it, it has a 120 gig hard drive in it, and that's double the size of what I have right here. I have a 60 in here. 
Uh, it's probably a 4200 RPM drive, but I do not know for sure. I don't see it on the box. Um, but 120 gig in a small package, that's pretty nice. And it is running on the new Intel A110 processor at 800 megahertz. And I've been an avid advocate of the 1 gigahertz Pentium M that I have in here, just from a purely performance standpoint. And uh, coupled with an extended battery, I, ha I have enough battery life. Here, I should have good battery life and hopefully won't sacrifice too much performance. Having the 120 gig hard drive, um, well, that's not really going to help my performance, but the, the 2 gig of RAM certainly will. And that's another comparison that I would be making between these two. Probably not so much running benchmarks, but literally using the devices and telling you what my my observations and my impressions have been. So um, that's that's one of the key things I want to talk about in, in the next week or two with these devices. The performance difference, number one. The performance of Vista on this device, number two. The inking experience, because this is a touch screen, and as this is as well, and I personally don't have an issue with it. Yes, it will vector, but Again, I've trained myself to use the bezel. This is going to be interesting to use this bezel and see how it works. So, And uh, other things along the way. You know, whatever you want to know, just leave it in the comments, and I'll do my best. Uh, just want to use this, get this configured for my everyday use, and then literally use it. Go on the road, take it to a coffee shop, do whatever, and uh, share my impressions. So thanks again to Dynamism for offering the loaner of the Vi S37. And uh, be sure to check them out at dynamism.com. And we'll see how this goes over the next week or two. Thanks. I had to go get some product in my hair.